What's good, everybody? God bless you guys in Jesus' name. This word is going to be a good word for, for a lot of you all. This word is going to be a great word for those that are believing God for their for their covenant husband, for their covenant wife, for their blessing. This is going to be a word of encouragement to encourage your faith of what is coming. Hey, good morning. God bless you. God bless you. This word right here is going to it's going to ignite your faith, but it's also going to get you to Selah. Do you know what the word Selah means? You know how you hear the word Selah in the Bible? You know what the word Selah means? It means to pause. <sighs> See, sometimes people need to be, people need to pause to make sure that what has come to you is from the Lord. That what God is leading you to is of him. See, because brothers and sisters, and I want to do this video to be a blessing to the body of Christ, to be a blessing to those that are that are waiting for the arrival or, or waiting for God to send them to who God has. Who God may present to you, bring you to, and do for you to be a blessing to you to be a blessing to your family, to be a blessing to your children if you have children already. And watch this, the reason why I'm doing this video is do you know that over 50% of people getting married in the church are blended families? We don't talk about this in the church, but do you know that people in the church, Christians in the church today, over 50% of people in the church that are that are that are or will get married are blended families already. So what does that look like? We don't talk about this in the church, but it needs to be addressed because if you don't know how to blend, if you don't know how to receive the blessing, you can destroy what God has for you. What does that look like as a family? You know God is about family, right? You know God is about covenant. You know we serve a God that is a covenant God, right? God is not just about you uh, uh, um, wanting to get your flesh fixed. God is about wanting to get your spirit right. But in making your spirit right, your soul and your flesh will be satisfied. I always tell Christians this. And they get mad when I say this. I said, if your type was the knoweth all, if your type, type, basically you choosing in the flesh was the answer to what it is that, that God would bless you with, then you would already have it. Could it very well be that it's not about your type because a lot of times most people are living according to the flesh choosing from their carnal lenses, not from the realm of the spirit to bring God glory. Come on, somebody. See, when choosing and when receiving what God wants to bless you with, are you choosing it by the spirit or are you choosing it by the flesh? See, Christians don't want to hear the truth so that they can walk in and be in the blessing so that they're not tripped up and then they wonder why all hell breaks loose in that relationship because you chose it in the flesh. Then they wonder why that man or that woman wasn't faithful because you chose it in the flesh. Then they wonder why that man or that woman betrayed you because they were carnal. They didn't know who they were in Christ Jesus and the relationship was not to bring glory to the Lord. The relationship was to bring glory to your flesh. Come on, somebody. But what would it be like? You understand and realize and know that when you select or God brings or God sends you to 
by the Spirit to bring him glory through that covenant relationship. God is responsible for maintaining what he blesses, but he is not responsible for what you choose in the flesh. God is not going to make something, hear me y'all, and please don't hear what I'm not saying, but don't hear me wrong. If you want to choose your own way according to the flesh, you will rob yourself of the greater glory of what God wants to bring to your life. See, I've seen it, brothers and sisters. I've been saved since 1998. I've seen a lot of stuff in the church. I've seen a lot of Christians that don't know who they are. I've seen a lot of Christians get flaky. They say they're faithful. They say they have faith, but they really don't live in faith. They live in feelings. They live in emotions. They live in, they live in what the world paints a picture and an image of. See, watch this. You must pay attention to the patterns and the responses and the characteristics of an individual even with their relationship with Jesus. See, because anybody can tell you that they're saved, that they're a Christian, but are they faithful? Because we have a lot of people that confess a lot of things, but are they living the life? Are they living a surrendered, submitted, sanctified life to Christ Jesus, or are they just going through the motions of churchianity? See, that's the problem with Western culture, Christianity, is it's so loose. Everyone says they're a Christian, but their lifestyle reflects nothing like it. Everybody says they're saved until the, until the fire and the purification begins to get hot and the temperature begins to rise. But God wants to bring to your life a blessing, a wonderful outpouring of his love to bring about a beautiful union to bring him glory. And when you bring him glory and you offer the covenant union marriage to him, he will, he will breathe upon it and bless it. And by his blessing, by him breathing upon it and him establishing and doing it for you, it will be blessed. What, what people would do for peace in their home. What people would do to have a love union flowing with the glory in the hand of the Lord upon that marriage, upon that family, upon those children, upon that home. But most people rob themselves short is because they're trying to do everything in the flesh. They're trying to do everything carnally. They're trying to do it in psychology methods. They're trying to do it, well, you know, I need to work on me. No, you need to die to self. See, when you have two people that are dead to self and alive to Christ, then can the glory come. See, people want miracles without work. People want blessings without submitting and surrender to the word of God. How can, you, how can you be a recipient of the blessing and the favor of God, but then yet not obey what the word says? See, when, you're, when God is going to bless you with somebody, he's not going to send somebody into your life that's going to be unfaithful. He's not going to send a carnal somebody that is going to be violent. He's not going to send you a Jezebel and a Delilah to, to rob and stop you and try to destroy your life. He's not going to do that. That's not the father. And that is not God's best. That is not the blessing of the Lord. That is an assignment of the devil that ultimately wants to entangle you in a snare and get you caught up in a mess. So I want to I talk to you guys about 
union, covenant, relationship. If the two people can't submit to Jesus, you're in trouble. If the husband and the wife and the wife and the husband are not rebuked and convicted of the Holy Spirit based upon how they love, then they're carnal as can be. Because those that truly have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, will so penetrate your heart and say, no, 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 no. Don't do him like that. Don't do her like that. See, God did not bring people into this life so that that way they can abuse one another. God did not bring that man into your life to abuse you or God did not bring that woman into your life to, to, to curse you and to, and to destroy you and to try to break apart a family. No, that's not the Lord. When God sends somebody into your life, it's to bless you and restore you. When God sends a man or a woman into your life, it's to heal your heart. Do you know, watch this, I'm about to destroy many of yours. I'm, I'm about to destroy and dismantle some of your sacred cows. Do you know that people, when they say, watch this, and, 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 and here's the thing, I get it, but Christians can be funny sometimes. They'll always say, well, I must be completely healed and completely ready so that that way when God wants to bless me, male or female, is God looking for your perfection or is he looking for your faith? See, because when somebody says, well, I'm still working on me, basically what they're saying is I'm so consumed in idolatry, I don't trust the Lord. I'm going to hit it, y'all. When people say, well, I'm still on my healing journey, watch this. Do you know that sometimes miracles come as you go? See, watch this. Christians can talk themselves out of miracles and blessings all because they think it's about their preparedness. If you think miracles, signs and wonders, and God's blessings is about you and you being prepared and ready for what it is that he can bless you with, that he can pour out into your life and release his goodness with and, and bless you like you wouldn't believe, what? how do you think he's going to get the glory, especially when it comes unexpectedly, especially when you didn't think you were ready? See, a lot of Christians rob themselves of miracles because they're waiting for themselves to be perfected. I'm about, I'm about, I'm, I'm going to set a lot of you free. Because a lot of Christians live from that mindset and that is a false reality that the devil has made you believe. Do you know that some of your healing won't be complete until that blessing he or she comes into your life and heals what another broke? God uses people to bless. The same way the devil uses people to curse and to destroy somebody is the same way God will use a person to come into your life to bless you, to restore you, and to heal you. Christians can be funny, y'all. Trust me, I've been around the church, and here's the thing: when I talk to Christians like this, they 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 get they get a lot of them begin to weep and cry because they begin to understand and realize they've been living a lie. Who told you you have to be perfected for a miracle to come? Who told you to work on you? There is nowhere in the Bible where it talks about working on you. If you go through the letters of the new covenant based upon what you're born again to, it doesn't say work on you. It says to crucify you. It says to deny you and to pick up your cross and follow Jesus because following Jesus is going to walk you into the blessings that you need. Christians, Christian Christians can be fun, can be silly sometimes, y'all. 
And a lot of times people will say this, I'm waiting for my Boaz. No, God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you to put aside that silly doctrine and that silly imagination and that silly Disneyland mindset and begin to believe him at his word so that you can prepare and make yourself ready. You know what? No, I don't have to be perfected. If I needed to, if I needed to worry about being perfected, what would, what would you need Jesus for? What would you need the Holy Ghost for? The Bible says he is your teacher. Let no man teach you, but who? He, who is he? The spirit of truth. What does truth do for you? It makes you free. Why do you need to be free so that your mind and your heart and your perspective is clear? Miracles is not about you. Miracles is about him. See, that's the problem that we have in the church. I'm getting to relationships here shortly. That's the problem that we have in the church is people don't want a, people don't want a relationship that's going to bring God glory. People want a relationship that's going to satisfy our flesh. Give me him. I want him. He's fine as can be. I want her. She's stacked as can be. Carnal. As fine, Mr. Fine and Mrs. Fine. But, but we'll come into your life and destroy it. We'll come into your life and, and dismantle and disintegrate your heart. Because in them, was never about God. It was about what can you do for me, baby? Satisfy my flesh. In fact, satisfy this beast of me. Do you know the carnal nature is a beast that you have to contain and control? Your carnal nature, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, we would be wicked as can be. So a lot of times Christians think, well, I've got to I got to make myself perfectly well and I got to get myself uh, fully healed. Says who? When your healing will come with who God blesses and what God does for you in your life. That's what you call the goodness of God that leads you into repentance and makes you say, my God, my God. I wasn't even prepared and ready for this miracle to come, but, but, but I'm so thankful. I wasn't even, I could not, I can't believe that even in the midst of brokenness, God sent this man, that God sent this woman into my life to be a blessing to me, to be a blessing to my children, to be a blessing to our home. He leads me in the ways of the Lord. She, she helps me and she supports me and she encourages me and she lifts me up and she makes me want to be a better man and she guards my heart. What is the price? See, a lot of people are, are, are giving away their birthright for a bowl of beans because they want what satisfies their flesh. They want the... They want the hot and now the hot and ready they want the they want the drive through meal make it a combo but it brings it brings forth no true spiritual nourishment that is going to propel you and excel you in the things of the lord and keep your life in perfect peace and a lot of people watch this they watch this. I know I've already dis, uh, dismantled, you know, one part of a sacred cow. So a lot of people say, well, I got to be I got to be healed all the way completely. And fully. I'm not saying for you to be for, for somebody to be crazy and and they're a wreck. But I'm at least saying that that that, that they're submitted to the Lord. That they've allowed the Lord to put the searchlight of heaven upon areas within their soul and areas within their life that they that they now have uh, put into check and say, you know what? I understand that it wasn't all his fault. It wasn't all her fault. I understand I got to take responsibility for things that I did too. 
and Lord help me to become better in this areas in this area of my life in relationships that I know I'm weak in. If we, if you can't take responsibility of things of what it is that we know we do, of what it is, things we know we caused, then we're deceived. And we see it all the time. See, growing and building something healthy is not about fault finding. It's about growing and maturing together as we trust the Lord. So people will say, well, I got to be perfectly made heal. I'm on my healing journey. Where did that come from? That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. The gospel is submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and that enemy is going to flee. Resisting the devil, what does the devil come at? And what does he try to keep Christians in? The flesh. As long as the devil can keep you carnal and in the flesh, he will have his way. But God wants to get you out of the flesh. He wants to get you to walk in the spirit so that life and peace comes upon your home and into your life to be a blessing to you in every aspect and area of it. So, so watch this. So watch this. You guys know the verse? He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor for the Lord. I want a man to search me and chase me down. I want a man to come and, and come after me and, and, and come and swoop me up. Watch this. Do you know that Isaac in the Bible didn't even go and find a wife? Do you know that Isaac in the Bible didn't even know a wife was coming? I'm going to read it to you. And I want for you guys to, you guys got to get out of your American gospel mentality. If you want to receive the miracle blessings of the Lord and walk into your promise and walk into your blessing and walk into this kingdom marriage, you got to get out of the kingdom, out of the American gospel mentality and get into the kingdom mindset. Because the American gospel mentality says, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for somebody to come chase me uh, like a wild gazelle so that that way uh, uh, I want him to pursue me uh, uh, with a javelin in his, in his hand and, and, and maybe in hopes he throws it my way and sticks me that way he can find me so I can be his wife. But is that what happened? Let's read it. I want for you guys to write down and remember this and do your study. Genesis chapter 24. Here we go. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to the eldest servant of his house, Eleazar of Damascus, who ruled over all that he had, I beg you, put your hand under my thigh. And you shall swear and you shall swear by the Lord and the God of heaven and earth that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I have settled. But you shall go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife, a take a wife for my son, Isaac. Isaac did not find a wife. He who finds a wife obtains favor from the Lord. He finds a good thing and obtains favor for the Lord. Isaac didn't do that. See, don't get stuck in the law. I'm, I'm, don't get stuck in the letter. Be submitted to the spirit. Do you know the letter kills, but the spirit gives life? Walk with me. The servant said to him, but, be, but perhaps the woman, now watch this, perhaps the woman will not be willing to come along after me to this country. So it wasn't even Abraham, the father of Isaac, 
that was going on this journey to find a wife for his son Isaac. Isaac didn't even know they were on the hunt to go find him a wife. Somebody say surprise. Somebody say, my Lord, my God. See, so many Christians get stuck in churchianity, get stuck in this weird theology. And they think, well, if they ain't going to come after me, if they're, if they're not going to come pursue me like a wild beast that I am. That I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for an angel to pick up a man and come place him at my doorstep and ring my doorbell. Ain't going to happen. It's going to happen as you continually walk with the Lord and as you're obedient, doing what God's called you to do. And as he's obedient, as she's obedient along the way, as you're walking to a destination on the same path in one vision, you will come and meet and God then will begin to join. Walk with me. The servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to come along after me to this country. Must I take your son to the country from which you came? Abraham said to, it, said to him, see to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house, from the land of my family and my birth, who spoke to me, and swore to me, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you will take a wife from here, there, for my son. And the woman should not be willing to go along after you. Then you will be clear from this oath. Watch this. Abraham told his servant, if the woman, if that woman is not willing to receive the blessing, leave her. Leave her there stuck, missing the blessing, missing the miracle, robbing herself of this destiny, robbing herself of this kingdom blessing that is coming her way, that this window of opportunity gets presented before you. But the question is, are you going to stay stuck while I'm still working on my healing brother? I'm still working on my healing sister. I'm still working on me. The devil is alive. That's the problem is, is your attention and your focus is on you, not Christ. Walk with me. And the servant took 10. Watch, so this. Um, and the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed, taking some of all of his master's treasures with him. Thus, he journeyed to the to the Mesopot Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down outside the city by a well of water. Story sound familiar? Woman at the woman at the well who encountered Jesus. Are you greater than our father Jacob who built this well? Walk with me. We're talking about Jacob's father, Isaac, in this story. I pray you, cause me to meet, I pray you, cause me to meet with good success today. Now the servant is praying. And show kindness to my master, Abraham. This servant so honored and loved Abraham and Isaac that he wanted to make sure that he was going to choose properly and correctly to bring home to Isaac a wife that Isaac didn't even know was coming. So you tell me, for all these American gospel weird theology that is out there, well, that man better pursue me. That man better chase me down. I'm waiting for my Boaz. No, God is waiting on you. Make yourself available and walk it out. Brothers and sisters, for those that know me, you know I go around laying hands upon the sick everywhere I go. Miracles happen everywhere I go. If I didn't go and pray for people 
on the streets and at the mall and at Walmart and at Target, at Kohl's, do you know those people would still have left that same place hurting and not healed? But obedience will cause you to stop for somebody to bring about a miracle for the one. See, God gave me a phrase that I now hold to my heart back in 2016 when miracles began to, began to happen in my life. And that phrase goes as this that the Lord gave to me that I use. It says, your obedience is someone's miracle waiting to happen. If you don't step out, don't expect a miracle. If you don't walk it out, don't expect a miracle. An angel was not just going to come and drop money at your doorstep. Not going to drop that woman at your doorstep. Not going to drop that man at your doorstep. Now, miracles like that can happen. But that is far and few. As you go. Do and obey the Lord and live the life. And along the way, God is going to make sure that that meat happens. Trust me. Here we go. See, I stand here at the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming to draw water. Now watch this. Somebody say options. Just because there's a lot of women that are coming to this well does not mean they're the one. Just because there's a lot of men does not mean they're the one. Because how many of you women have chose crazy before? How many of you women have chose brother crazy? How many of you women have chose brother unfaithful? How many of you women have chose brother abandoned? I'm hitting home for a reason, brother, because I'm going to heal your heart at the end of this. Not me, but Christ in me by the anointing of the Holy Ghost coming upon you to bring unto you reassurance and faith to encourage you that God is not done and your miracles on the way. Somebody say my miracles on the way. I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm trying to build your faith to receive and make the landing strip of your heart ready for that man or for that woman to land. See, the problem is a lot of you have taken away the landing strip because you're so focused on working on you. You've lost focus of Christ, allowing him to transform you by his word, making all things new. You get so focused upon you and so absorbed with you that you miss that, 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 that you now are actually in idolatry and not in faithfulness to the Lord. Christians do it all the time, y'all. This is not condemnation, but this is this is this is an awakening to get you back on track with the faithfulness of the Lord. Christianity is not about Christianity is not about working on you. Do you know how many people I prayed for that aren't even saved that received a miracle? It had nothing to do with their faith, but it had everything to do with mine and my obedience to to going over there and to pray for them. And when I stepped out by faith and God moved, it not only wrecked that individual, but even those that were around that person that received that miracle, their hearts begin to melt. And you don't got to talk anybody into Christianity when they have an encounter with Jesus as such. It opens their heart to receive the gospel. See, I don't put, I don't force Christianity upon nobody. I give them Jesus. And when they encounter the love, by the touch of a, of a miracle and the love of Christ coming upon their life, they're ready to receive this love. Because, because Jesus is real to me, y'all. I don't know about you, but I live this life sanctified. I live this life for real. I don't just do church. I'm not just a Christian on Sunday. I live the life on the daily. Every day, I live the life daily. Because the Bible says that we are living epistles read by all men. People are watching you. If people were to watch, hear me, hear me all. If people were to look at your life, would they want the Jesus that you say you have? Let's keep on. Here we go. And let, and let it so be that the girl to whom I say, watch this. 
Somebody say, attentiveness to the voice. And in her, she's already prepared and ready to do what it is this man prays. Watch this, y'all. This is beautiful. Man, this is beautiful, y'all. This is beautiful. See, some of you all, some of you all are being liberated and set free from American gospel mentality and mindset that is robbing you from what God wants to bring into your life. Do you know that, the, that a wrong belief system can rob you of miracles? A wrong belief system and a wrong doctrine of how you believe and how you see can rob you and, and stifle and hinder your progress and growth in the things of the Lord. The Bible works. The word of God works. Miracles happen every day. Here we go. And let it so be that the girl to whom I say, I pray you, I pray you, let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she replies. Now you got to remember, again, this is out of Genesis, out of Genesis chapter 24. And when you get time, read this. This man is praying for what it is he expects. Here we go. And, and she replies, drink, and I will give your camels drink also. Somebody say she's not just in it for the man. She's in it to take care of the family. And she's in it even for the things that, that, that she knows that are near and dear to him, that are near and dear to her. See, because a man could be interested in you, but he, but he, but he don't want any part of your children. A woman could be interested in you, but she don't want any part of your children. Not it. Not it. Bye, Felicia. Bye-bye. Get the stepping because you need to get out of the way because I'm waiting for my miracle to arrive. Walk, walk with me, y'all. And I will give your camel's drink also. Let her be the one whom you have selected. Let her be the one whom you have selected and appointed and indicated for your servant, Isaac, to be a wife to him. And by it, I shall know that you have shown kindness and faithfulness to my master. He was still thinking about Abraham. His prayer wasn't even for him. And he was still thinking about Isaac. He wasn't even self-absorbed. He wanted the blessing for his master's son, Isaac. Come on, man. You need friends like that. You need friends like that that, that are going to pray your miracle to come. You need friends like that that are not so self-absorbed and always worried about what they're going through that they would take time to pray for you too. You need friends like that around your life that will, that my God will contend for your blessing, that will contend for your miracle, that will say, my God, I'm believing God for your miracle and breakthrough to come. I want to see you blessed. I want to see God's favor upon your life. I want to see God do it in your life. Do you got friends like that? If you don't, you need to find them. <sighs> before, before he had finished speaking, behold, out came Rebecca. Before he had finished speaking, behold, out came Rebecca. Brothers and sisters, Isaac is not here. Isaac is not abiding to he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor for the to the uh, obtains favor from the Lord. Isaac doesn't even know a wife is coming. Get out of your American Christianity mindset, y'all. A lot of you all are robbing yourself from miracles coming your way because you're so consumed in what all these preachers are telling you. These preachers are keeping you bound. These teachers are keeping you hindered. 
That's why you must do study and do your own due diligence and know what the word of God says and don't let anyone rob you and stop you of your miracle blessing of what has your name on it all because a preacher told you, wait for him to find you. You can wait for a miracle to come all day, every day if you want to. Like I said, if I were to sit here on my hands and not pray for people out here and in the church and on here on social media, how many people, how many people would not have been healed had we not obeyed? See, people think that obedience is this well. It would have happened anyway. No, no, it don't. Why do you think God needs you, y'all? Why do you think God called you? Angels assist those that are heirs of salvation, of salvation. Angels co-labor with the sons and daughters of God on the earth who he has given his spirit to. I'm telling you, man, the American gospel Christianity a lot of it is robbing Christians from miracles, signs, and wonders and God's blessing and favor coming nigh unto their life all because they believe wrong. Hear me, y'all. Here we go. Before he had finished speaking, behold, out came Rebekah, who was the daughter of Bethel, uh, uh, Bethuel, Bethuel, son of Mike Milka who was the wife of Nahor, the brother of Abraham, with her water jar on her shoulder. Somebody say she was carrying the word. With her water jar on her shoulder. Somebody say she walks with the word upon her life. See, I don't want no fake it till you make it. Somebody playing the part. Either you're walking the life and you're living the life or you're not. There will be evidence of the fruit of the water in which you bear. Because the water of the word will wash you and purify you of the world and the mindset of carnality. Because the spirit abides in the water. He will hover over the water even when there's no form, even when it's without form and void and nothing's there because it's the spirit that brings life. <laughs> Before he had finished speaking, okay, here we go. Uh, with her water jar on her shoulder. She's walking around like this, full of the word, going to get more. She's got to have the word. She's got to have, she's got to have Jesus. He's got to have Jesus. I don't care if he goes to church. I don't care if she goes to church. Going to church doesn't make anyone a believer. They can say they're a Christian all day, every day, but is there evidence of the fruit? of what it is they say they belong to from the tree from which they abide from? Is there fruit that you can pick from their life that speaks? See, she was walking around like this. You want to know why? It's because she lived ready. She lived ready. Are you living ready? Are you living ready for the miracle promise of what God wants to send into your life and bring you into? Walk with me. Remember, this here, because for a lot of American Christians, I'm waiting for my Boaz. I'm waiting. He who finds a wife finds a good thing, brother. And he's going to obtain favor from the Lord. I'm just waiting for him to find me. I'm waiting for him to peek through my window curtain because I'm not going nowhere. I'm just sitting on my couch being still waiting. 
I'm hoping that he finds me somehow, some way. Maybe he's the Amazon driver. Maybe he's the UPS man. Maybe he's the mailman. But how's the man of God going to find you if all you're doing is sitting still? <laughs> uh, I'm messing with you, but I'm not. Because I want to challenge your mindset. Here we go. And the girl was very beautiful and attractive. My God, he was choosing well for Isaac. Come on, man. This servant knew how to choose, y'all. Chaste and mod Chaste and modest. Uh-oh. Chaste and modest. She wasn't out here doing Bible studies, showing chichis. You know, hey, I got a word for you, brothers. I got a word for you, uh, brothers and sisters. I got a word. I'm going to be reading out of Romans today, and chichis are hanging out. That's not modest. That's foolishness. I call it for what it is. That's crazy. Women be showing skin thinking that thinking thinking they're actually doing Jesus a service when in reality and here's what's even more crazy is when they say God spoke to me and I got a word for you well it's crazy that you got a word for the church but God doesn't speak to you about your flesh so God speaks to you to give a word to the church but he never speaks to you about covering up your body you're just giving it all to everybody because you got a word for everybody because you want to show your body because people are not tuning in for the word that you preach. People are tuning in for the chichis that you show. I'm, I'm going to be on it. See, I don't play y'all. As I said, I live this. I live a sanctified life. And people will ask me, brother, how come miracles happen with you? Why do miracles always happen everywhere you go? It's because I live the life, y'all. I don't play Christianity. I'm not faking it till you make it. And I know, I know there's even preacher women that have gotten mad at me because I told them, stop wearing that tight dress. Because you're misrepresenting Jesus. You want people to focus on your attire and, and, and how cute your dress is showing that booty when no one's paying attention to the word because they're checking you out. I can't help. They got lust, brother. I can't help. They got. No, it's not lust. It's you. It's you being carnal as can be. You're not you're not being pleasing to the Lord. It just reveals your heart of how it is you truly see yourself. Cheap. 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 If it's a rebuke, take it for what it is. Amen? And grow. I don't like this brother. I don't like this brother. He, this brother, he's got the knife out. <laughs> this brother's like Peter. He's cutting every, he's cutting my flesh. I need to get away from this life. Let me turn this brother off. He's cut, he's got the knife out like Peter. He's, he's cutting flesh today. <laughs> no, I'm trying, I'm trying to get you to the blessing. I'm trying to get you to the miracle. I'm trying to help the ecclesia walk in the fruitfulness and the blessing of the Lord. I'm trying to help the people of God not miss what God wants to bring. Brothers and sisters, I love you all. I'm not, I'm not being mean. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Chaste and modest. Chaste and modest. Modesty is beautiful. Modesty is preciosa. Beautiful. Modesty to a man of God is treasure. Tesoro. Beautiful. Mwah. Modesty to a man of God because a woman that respects her body, respects her man, vice versa. Come on, somebody. See, her body is not for other men to check out. <laughs> Christian, uh, some Christian women, they're a trip, y'all. I'm just going to tell her how a T.I. is, straight up. And the servant ran to meet her. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, chaste and modest and unmarried. 
and she went down to the well, filled the water jet, filled the water jar, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, I pray you, let me drink a little water from your water jar. And she said, Drink, my Lord. Oh, I'm not going to submit to that man. Drink, my Lord. She don't even know the man. And she's already showing honor. She just met the man and she came out with honor right from the gate. Drink, my Lord. And she quickly let down her jar onto her hand and gave him a drink. Hold up. And she quickly let down her jar onto her hand and gave him a, a drink. What? What? I'm not going to do that, brother. Brother, that, that's crazy. Honor is beautiful. I will draw water for your camels also. Exactly what he prayed for. Until they finish drinking, until they're satisfied and full, that they're not thirsty no more. I'm not just going to give you a little bit of me. I'm going to give you enough that satisfies that thirst in your life. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well and drew water for all of his camels. The man stood gazing at her in silence. He was marveled. He was like, what? She's what I prayed for, for my servant, Abraham's son, Isaac. You got to remember, Isaac didn't find her. Isaac didn't even know the Isaac didn't even know he had a wife coming. <laughs> the man stood gazing at, at her in silence. Wow. What kind of woman is this? My God. Waiting to know if the Lord had made his trip prosperous. Wait on the Lord. And when the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold earring a, a or nose ring of half a shekel in weight and for, for her hands, two bracelets, 10 shekels in weight in gold and said, whose daughter are you? I pray you tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge there? And she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Mike Milcah, and her husband Nahor. She said also to him, we have both straw and, and provender, which is fodder enough, and also room in which to lodge for you to say. The man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord because he knew it was happening. Oh, see, when the blessing begins to happen for your life and God begins to bring that man into your life, God brings that woman into your life, it's going to be a blessing. You're going to bow and give worship to the Lord because you're like, my God, it's everything that I prayed for. He's a blessing to me and my kids. She's a blessing to me and my kids. She's a blessing to my to, to my life and she's going to walk with me. She's going to help me. We're going to do, it's going to be about kingdom business and it's going to be about love and, and, and it's going to be about modeling, modeling what marriage and covenant union looks like so that other marriages are healed and blessed and restored also. Do you know that God is not, God is not just wanting you to, 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 to bring together a marriage so that that way it's always about kissing and, 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 and chasing each other around the house. No, he wants, he wants for that union to be a blessing to help heal and restore the lives of other marriages and couples to show them how to live out 
how to live out walking together and bringing Jesus glory through that union. Oh, but I want him for my flesh. I want her for my flesh. I want her to satisfy me. I want him to satisfy me. And I want for him to be the uh, working around the house. And I want for him to be putting up the gutters. Where is Jesus? Listen to what people say, y'all. I want him for him to have six figures. I want for her to have six figures. I want for her body to look like this. I want for him to be this tall. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus in the Lord getting glory from what it is your heart desires? Where is your heart in all of this? Get out of your lenses. You have allowed your lenses to choose for you all of your life and look what it got you. Look what you allowed your lenses to bring to your life, which almost destroyed some of your lives. Come on, man. Can I get a witness? How many of you all chose wrong and that man and that woman almost killed you? That man and that woman almost destroyed you. It was hell, not heaven in that relationship. So don't tell me not choosing to bring Jesus to bring Jesus glory it should not be the focus and the source of what brings the two together. Because you can choose a devil that looks like a Christian. Come on, y'all. Now watch this. The girl related to her to her mother's household what had happened. Now, Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban and Laban ran out to the man at the well. For when he saw the earring and, or nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, and when he heard Rebecca, his sister saying, the man said this to me. He went to the man and found him standing by the camels at the well. He cried, come in, you blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? So you don't want to bring Jesus into this relationship. Oh, he makes me feel good, brother. Oh, he speaks so he he speaks amazing things to my soul. He makes my heart he strums my heart strings, brother. It's like playing the violin in my heart, brother. He makes me feel so good, but where is Jesus? A meal was set before him, but he said, I will not eat until I have told of my errand. And Laban said, go ahead, tell me, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant and the Lord has blessed my master mightily. And he has, and he has become great. And he has given his flocks, herd, silver, gold, met servants, maid servants, camels, and, and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And to him, he has given all that he has. And my master made me swear, saying, you must not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanite in whom's land that I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. Isaac didn't know he had a wife coming. This dismantles, y'all, the American falsity. Well, I'm waiting for him to find me. Well, he better chase me. He better pursue me. He better hurry up. Are you positioning yourself? Are you like this woman that went to go give the man of God a drink? Because there was other women all around too. But she was the one that gave him a drink and his camels. Then you shall be clear from my oath when you come to my kindred. And if they do not give her to you, you shall be free and innocent of my oath. I came today 
to the well and said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you are now causing me to go on my way prosperously, see, I am standing by the well of water. He's rehashing the prayer. Now let it be that when the maiden comes out to draw the water and I say to her, I pray you give me a little water for your water jar to drink. And if she says to me, you, you drink and I will draw water for your camels. Also, let that same woman be the one whom the Lord has selected and indicated for my master's son. Somebody say the camels are coming and you will get water for them to drink. <sighs> and before I had finished praying in my heart, behold, Rebecca came out with her water jar on her shoulder. And she went down to the well and drew water. And I said to her, I pray you, let me have a drink. Notice that Rebecca came prepared carrying the word. And she quickly let down her water jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will water your camels also. So I drank and she gave the camels drink also. I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcow before be, bore to him. And I put earring and nose ring on her face and the bracelets on her arms. And I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord and God, my master, Abraham. Do you see that it's about the Lord? It's not about your flesh. It's, an, it's not about, well, my type. You know, the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. You know, the Bible says that that the flesh is wicked and sinful? Do you know that the Bible says the carnal mind is the enemy of God? What if your carnal mind has been chosen wrong all along is because you never presented it before the Lord? Here we go. I'm going to jump down here real quick and I want you guys to read this on your own time because man, Genesis 24 is beautiful, y'all. Genesis 24 is amazing. Verse number 58. So they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. No. Nah. I'm going to stay here. I know the blessing and the miracle has arrived, but I'm going to stay with what's familiar. I know the blessing and the miracle is not where I am, but I'll, I'll stay stuck. I don't want to go. I'll just stay here. Continually praying, asking God, send me my miracle. But when God sends the miracle, I won't go. So many people don't receive their blessing and their miracles because they're stuck in familiarity. If you're willing to do, if you're willing to do, if you're willing to go, no matter what it is you want in life, if you want the blessings of God, there's going to be sometimes God is going to ask of you and require of you sometimes things that may be hard for you to choose. Okay, you can think what you want. Like I said, that American gospel mentality, where has it gotten many? So they so so they sent away Rebecca, their sister and her nurse, Deborah, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, you are our sister. May you become the mother of thousands. Oh, she didn't even know. She had no idea that she was going to walk into fruitfulness. She had no idea that 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 moment at the well was going to change her life forever, just like the woman at the well that met Jesus. 
that gave her a drink. Oh my God, y'all. My God. Brothers and sisters, Christians, Christians miss miracles more than they fail to realize. All because they're stuck and they allow fear to lead them. See that? How many of you all are waiting for that? Notice how they're locked in. But if you want that without Jesus, good luck. If you want that without being without dying to self and, and you serving and choosing and wanting to live in the flesh, good luck. If you choose in the flesh, you'll have to maintain it in the flesh. But if you let God do it, let God choose it, he will maintain it and sustain it and bless it and it will be fruitful. More than you know. Ah, glory be to Jesus. And let your posterity possess the gate of their enemies. And Rebekah and her maids arose and followed the man upon their camels. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went on his way. Rebekah hasn't even seen Isaac yet. Rebecca doesn't even know who Isaac is. But yet, she still went. See, a lot of times people play this fantasy island. The plane, the plane boss, the plane. They play this Disneyland and Disney World princess theology not understanding faith faith will stretch you faith faith will cause your flesh to cringe because it will crucify what you want to receive what he wants for you to have and to possess and to walk into now here we go Now Isaac had returned from going to the well for he now dwelt in the south country and Isaac went out to meditate and bow down in prayer. He's a man of prayer. He's a faithful man. He's not just going to church on Sunday. He lives the life. He sets aside. He sets. Uh, he, see, I don't just set aside time, y'all. God is always on my mind. As I said, for me and for those that live the life, he's constantly on my mind. Even when I'm sitting across from somebody and I'm with people, God is still on my mind. I love spending time with my Lord. He's that real to me, y'all. He's faithful, man. He is amazing. He's beautiful. He's awesome. See, his presence doesn't for me. I'm not, I don't, I don't read my word. I don't pray. I don't, I'm not, I don't worship to try to get something from God. No, I do it because I want to spend time with the one that I love. I honor my Lord and he meets me every time. Oh, he's beautiful, y'all. I'm telling you. And Isaac, okay, okay, here we go. And Isaac went out to meditate and he and, and bowed down in prayer in the open country in the evening. And he looked up and he looked up and he saw that behold, the camels were coming. Somebody say the camels are coming. The camels represent your miracle. The camels represent what is carrying your blessing. The camels represent it's going to carry upon what it is you've been waiting for, that you've been praying for and believing God for. Ah, and Rebecca looked up and when she saw Isaac for the first time, she dismounted from the camel. 
For she had said to the servant, who is that man walking across the field to meet us? She didn't see Isaac. She don't know Isaac. But yet she was still faithful to go to a place that she did not know to receive her miracle blessing. That's why a lot of people won't encounter the supernatural realities of the kingdom because they're because they live carnal. They don't want to live in the spirit because when you live by faith, the uncertainty scares your flesh. And Rebecca looked up and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel for she had said to the servant, who is that man walking across the field? Who, who, who is that man? Walking across the field. My God. Who that? That's what she... No, I'm just playing. And the servant said, He is my master. So she took a veil and concealed herself. She took a veil and concealed herself with it. And the servant told Isaac everything that he had done. Isaac didn't even know the blessing was coming for him to show up where he was to satisfy his soul. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That wasn't this case. Get out of your box, y'all. Well, this man better chase me down. He better come hunt me down. He better get on. He better put on his fastest shoes because he needs to catch up with me. No, you're positioning yourself wrong. <laughs> and Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, and he took Rebecca and she became his wife. And she became, and they dated, and he courted her, and they went and had coffee at Starbucks, and they went and saw a movie. He knew the blessing had arrived. She went there on assignment. Where am I going with all this, brothers and sisters? This was not a selfish choosing. This was the design of God. See, you can keep choosing by the flesh if you want to. Keep on. You can choose by the soul if you want to. Keep on. But you've already seen how you choose. You've already experienced the heartbreak of what you can do. How about you let God do what he needs to do to bring to you what you need? How about you let God build this? How about you, how about you stay faithful and true to what God has called you to and you position yourself, keep being faithful and obedient to God, stay out of carnality, stay out of the flesh and stop trying to attract him with that body. Why would you want to attract a man with your body when that's not even who you are? Because when we die, we leave this body. But yet you want to attract somebody with that body and that's not even your that's not even really who you are, which is why which is why when men and women sleep with men and women, which is why you get up from that bed empty as can be. You get up from that bed feeling disgusted and dirty and, and unclean. It's because you gave your body to another without the Lord in it. Brothers and sisters, I love you in the name of Jesus. 
I've done seen many homes wrecked and destroyed because of choosing in the flesh. I've experienced it myself, brothers and sisters. I know what I'm talking about. See, I don't care if that man or that woman says they're a Christian. I don't care if they say they do devotions. That don't matter to me. I want to see your life. You better watch their life. Are they in it for them? Or are they in it for God? Are they in it for what you can bring to the table? Or are they in it to bring Jesus glory? Well, he better have six figures. He better, he better bring this to the table. She better bring this to the table. Where's Jesus, y'all? And no wonder why people end up in, dis in devastation. It's because Jesus was not involved in any of it, but yet we want to slap God upon it when all hell starts busting loose. I've been there. I've done it. So I know. So I'm with you. Somebody say never again. Somebody say this time. Somebody say this time. Only God's way. And he alone. And this relationship would not be two people living in the flesh, wanting their own agenda and way. It would be two people that are dead to self that come together, which, which come together and are made alive in Christ. The only way to true freedom and true life is two people that are dead to self, but alive to him. God's still going to bless you with somebody that is going to be appealing to your heart and good for your eyes. I'm not saying that he's going to be ugly. I'm not saying that she's not going to be beautiful, you bro. She's going to do it for you, brother. She's going to, he's going to do it for you, sis. He's going to love you. She's going to love you. But if you're not, but if you don't do it from the get go, Right out the gate with Jesus being the center of it all. You're setting yourself up for destruction. If God is not in it. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent. And he took Rebecca and she became his wife. And he loved her. Thus Isaac was comforted after his mother's passing away. See, sometimes in your life, you may you may have come out of a season that 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 brought to your life death, devastation, destruction, hell, heartbreak. Whatever. But God wants to bring to you the blessing. The question is, can you see it? Can you choose by faith? Not with these carnal lenses, but can you see from the lens of the can you see from the lenses of faith by the Spirit? So that you don't choose because of this. You choose because of who Christ is in that person. Because you know that this relationship, this union, this marriage is going to bring glory and honor to the Lord. See, God don't want your heart broke no more. See, God don't want your soul wounded no more. And for those of you that are just now tuning in, I'm going to say this again. Stop saying, well, I'm still working on my healing, brother. Well, brother, I need to be healed first. A part of your healing is in another. If it took one to break you, it will take another to come help comfort and heal you that is from the Lord. Get out of this psychology, American gospel, y'all. 
We need people in this earth to model and represent the power of Jesus Christ. No, I need to work on me. No, what you're saying is you're in idolatry. Christianity is not about me. Christianity, Christianity is about him, not me. Christianity is about me dying. Christianity is about me crucifying this flesh and this self so that I can be alive in him. It is I that no longer lives. What are you doing still living? If you're working on your healing, then you are still living. No wonder you no wonder why your healing and your heart and your soul has not been healed is because you have not died fully so that you can live now in him. I'm coming strong for a reason, y'all. Because I'm here to dismantle the lie from the pit of hell. I'm here to dismantle the psychology doctrine that is destroying lives all across this world. This psychology doctrine, Christianity stuff that is not bringing liberation and freedom to anybody other than what? You know more about you? So you know so much about you, but you know nothing about him. I thought you said you were a Christian. I thought you said you love Jesus. I thought you said you were dead to self. So if you're dead to self and you're a believer in Christ Jesus, what are you still doing focusing on you? Are you ready for your miracle? Are you ready for your blessing? It's going to come in your dying to self and to your carnal choosings. And your carnal lenses that has gotten you in a mess, that has chose for you wrong in so many different areas and ways. And the outcomes of what it is that came your way almost destroyed you. Get your eyes off of you and get your eyes upon the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. This marriage and this relationship and this kingdom union is not just for you. It's to bring Jesus glory through that marriage. And until you understand and realize that, you'll have two people or one person still carnal, fighting and feuding and wrestling and in it, the only one that's getting glory is the devil that's using it to destroy those lives. But if you let God build it, if you let God do it, and if you die to yourself, but you come alive to him, he will breathe upon it and bless it and you will have what your heart desires. Ah, glory be to Jesus. I want that for you, bro. I want that for you, sis. Come on. You done been through the ringer for how long now? You want that? You want that? Who wants that? Are you willing to do what God asks of you to do? Are you willing to trust him all the way? See, your mind will talk you out of a miracle. Your mind will talk you out of the blessing. Do you know you can forfeit a blessing? Do you know that you can forfeit a miracle? How, brother? Carnal. Carnal is unbelief. Unbelief is sin. God don't bless sin. He blesses faithfulness. Brothers and sisters, I would love to have just preached what it is I just did on this live today on a stage full of thousands because I promise you there would be many, I promise you the altars would be flooded with people that are brokenhearted, that are believing God for their miracle, that literally this word would literally just turn something on in them and now the faucet is turned on once again and the water is beginning to flow.
Will the hearts and the lives of people, their hearts and their souls and their lives will be healed, restored, empowered again, encouraged again, have strength to believe again for their miracle that is on the way. Isaac didn't know Rebecca was coming. Isaac, Isaac didn't know that he was going to be surprised with a wife that was going to be what, did he, what it is he needed. Isaac wasn't being religious and saying, well, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, brother. And he obtains favor from the Lord. Isaac didn't do none of that. Get out of the formulated model of how you think God's going to bless you. And get into faith. And trust and believe that what he's doing in your life right now, preparing your heart right now, just be anticipating and expecting your miracle to come. I know my prayer works. I know faith in me works. I don't need your faith for me to pray for your miracle to happen. I know in the God in whom I serve. See, I trust in the Lord that much that when I pray, I know things happen. I don't think things happen. I know they happen because I trust in my Lord. Because I love him and he loves me and he's my father. And we're one. Do you know the marriage is supposed to reflect the oneness of your relationship with the Lord? But Christians are out here, out here choosing carnally all day, every day. And there's no reflection of the Lord in that relationship anywhere. I love you on the name of Jesus. May God bless you with your heart's desire of what it is you don't even know is coming and on the way. May God do for you and open the door and make available for you the blessing and the miracle that he will send you to or that will come your way. The question is, are you willing and ready to do and to step into what God has for you? You can stay stagnant. You can stay stagnant and live in fear and not experience miracles and blessings if you want to. Or you can choose to believe God and step out by faith and watch and see what God shall and will do for you when you submit your life to Christ and you're ready to receive the miracles that he has for you. This word right here. I'm going to post this word on my YouTube channel because I believe that this word right here needs to be heard across the globe. Because it's, it's time to dismantle the lies and it's time to address the Christians that are living in a false reality, that are living in this American fantasy island mindset. And a lot of women are waiting for men to chase them down and to come hunt them. And men are doing the same, waiting. When in reality, have you prayed? Have you asked God and connect yourself with people? Get around people. Position yourself. Be discerning, yes, and watch out for the devils. Because there's a lot of devils in the flesh, y'all. There's a lot of devils with lipstick on. And there's a lot of devils that call themselves a Christian man and women in the church that do not live the life. They do this, but they don't do this. They don't lay submitted to the Lord being obedient to what he's called them to do. See, because you being connected to this man and you being connected to this woman is for the glory of Jesus Christ and for the, and for the accomplishing of the assignment that God will use you both for. And guess what? Your children get to come along on this journey to see what love looks like. Ah, 
because this is not just about you. As I, I'm going to say it and say it and say it. This is not about you, baby girl. This is not about you, homeboy. This is about you bringing glory through, through it, the union to bring glory to the name of the Lord. But through that union is going to be bring blessing, favor and love to those children. And they're going to grow up prosperous because of that union of what God blessed. As I said, over 50% of people getting married in the church today are blended families. So don't be going into that man's life and you don't like his children. Don't be going into that woman's life and you don't like her children. If you don't like his children, get the stepping. If you don't like her children, get the stepping. Hit the road, Jack. Get out. Because your carnal ass can be. Don't do that to that man. Don't do that to that woman because this woman and this man wants a husband and a wife. Don't do that to people. Don't do that. I'm passionate about it because I've seen it happen and I've experienced it myself. So don't do that because it's not cool and it's not God. Amen. I love you in the name of Jesus, y'all. If you're not going to marry that woman, leave her alone. If you're not going to marry that man, leave him alone. And if you don't see yourself as a family, then get out of the way because somebody else will. I'm tired of the foolishness going on in the church, y'all. We got a bunch of knucklehead Adams and a bunch of knucklehead Jezebel and Delilahs. What can you do for me? What can we do for Jesus? See, that's the problem. That's the problem. What can you do for me? What can he bring to the table? What can she bring to the table? No, what can we bring to the table for the glory of God? To leave a legacy of what it looked like to model love. To leave, to leave a legacy and the blessing upon our children that they will be able to say, man, I saw how he loved mom. I saw how she loved, I saw how she loved my dad. I saw how he loved my mama. And they model to us what marriage looks like when Jesus is at the center of it all. Your children want it and need it as, more, as much as you need it and want it to. But it's going to bring glory and honor. Ooh, it's going to bring glory and honor to the Lord. It's going to bring glory and honor to the Lord through this union relationship of love that God wants to join together. It's not about you, though it is. It's about God's love, blessing that union and faithfulness and shining upon it and blessing those children that they will have a safe place, that they will be secure in that, in that union, in that family. They will grow up in a good home. Yeah, he loved mom. He taught me the word. I got to see, I watched his life. He wasn't just a Christian on a Sunday. She wasn't just a Christian on the Sunday. Yeah, she loved me like my own mom loves me. She came into the family already ready to embrace us. He came into the family already ready to embrace us. There was no segregation. I love you all in Jesus' name. See, I'm passionate about this because it's real. And right now as I speak, in many homes across this globe, brokenness is happening. Heartache is happening. Devastation is happening. 
because they chose not to allow the Lord to bring it and do it and bless it, or they did allow the Lord to bring it and do it, but one of them had no faith or stepped out of the grace or chose to go and do what it is they wanted to do, y'all. You can't force anyone to stay or to do anything, period. But two people submitted to Jesus Christ will always live in obedience to the Lord and to one another. I love you all. Be encouraged. Be blessed. And go in the grace and the peace of the Lord. God is waiting on you. You're not waiting on him. You're not waiting on her. God is waiting on you. So get out. I'm not talking about out in the world. I'm talking about get out in the Christian community. And let the Lord begin to align you accordingly. But do not choose carnally. Do not choose with the lenses and the eyes of flesh. Because if you do, there will be consequences. There's a cause and effect to all things of what we give our yes and our no to. Remember that. I love you all. Have a beautiful and an amazing day. I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel. So if you want to rewatch it and share it, I will have it up later. And my YouTube channel is at Christopher Berlanga. Christopher Berlanga, you'll find it and you'll see it there. So be blessed. Be encouraged. And understand and realize and know God has not forgotten about you. God is not trying to hold back from you. What it, God is not trying to hold back anything from you. He is a loving father that loves you, that wants to bring to your heart healing. But I promise you, brothers and sisters, if you think you need to wait until you're completely healed for, for the blessing to come, you're gonna, you're, you, you are delaying the progress of the miracle of what God wants to send your way. You are limiting the hand of the Lord. Because in that man and in that woman, in that man and in that woman, is going to be the healing that they will carry to bring unto you. She will heal things in your heart, bro, that that other woman broke. Hear me, brother. She will heal in your heart what that other woman broke. He will heal in your heart, my sister, what, what that man broke. What that man didn't cherish, another will. Be blessed. I love you all. God bless you. In Jesus' name.